All right, we're back with some simple harmonic motion, and in particular, we're going to look at um, when you have specific problems. How do you figure out uh, what what the solution looks like? That is, for something like position, as the spring is bouncing back and forth between two amplitudes, um, how do you know if if you're going to use a sine or a cosine? Um, it turns out that when, when you solve differential equations and problems with these differential equations, a really important thing to look at are, are what we call initial conditions. And that's basically something that uh, we'll say in a problem um, when time equals zero. Okay, so in other words, when the problem starts, what does it look like? What's happening? So we're going to do three different examples here. And we have our, our typical type of picture. Um, we're just saying a, a mass on a spring is, is oscillating back and forth. Uh, you have two amplitudes, the endpoints, where it stops and turns around and comes back. So, for example, uh, let's say we're told in a problem that um, initially, at time equals zero, it's at one of the amplitudes. So that would mean that the position is an amplitude and the initial speed is zero. Okay, that, that's the point where it stops and all of your energy is potential energy. So we have two choices. We could say that either x could be um, an amplitude times cosine of omega t or that it's amplitude times sine of omega t. Now, how do we know which one to select? Well, the trick is uh, time equals zero. We can plug that in. So if we plugged it into the, the cosine equation, we'd have amplitude times cosine of zero. And if we plugged it into the sine solution, we'd have amplitude times sine of zero. Well, the cosine cosine of zero is, is one, so that would give you the amplitude. The sine of zero is zero, so th that one doesn't work. So here's a case um, where we don't have to worry about a phase angle or anything if we go ahead and, and we choose the cosine solution. This would be the appropriate solution for that particular problem. Now compare that to if, if you had a different set of initial conditions where uh, when time equals zero, you're at equilibrium. So in other words, you're, you're moving, and in that snapshot, you're moving the fastest. Well, uh, based on what we just said from above, the one that would work is if we, we chose the solution of your, your position as amplitude times the sine of, of your angular frequency times time. Because when you plugged in time equals zero, Uh, you'd end up with the, the sine of zero being zero, and that would work. Okay, so that would be the appropriate solution without a phase angle. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't quite work well <laughs> if um, you're in between equilibrium and one of your amplitudes. So what if you do have some non-zero or non-amplitude position and a non-zero initial speed? Well, here it, it won't matter if you use sine or cosine, as long as you're using that so-called phase angle. So you could choose as a solution for your position amplitude times the cosine of omega t plus a phase angle. Or, if you prefer sine, you could do that too. Um, except you'd have you'd have a, a different phase angle. Maybe we'd call it phi two, and this would be phi one. That would be the only difference between these two solutions would be the phase angle. Um, nothing's going to affect the amplitude. Which one you choose won't affect your angular frequency. In fact, your angular frequency in most problems you're you're probably given the mass and the spring constant. So don't forget the angular frequency is the square root of k over m. Okay, so that, that's usually known. Um, 
Now there's there's a couple ways you can approach this. Uh, more often than not, your amplitude and phase angle won't be given in a problem. Okay, so often they set these things up where you have two unknowns. Okay, so it, who knows? It, it'll vary from problem to problem. However, the general way we think about this is the same. You can choose either one of these general solutions, sine or cosine. Let's say you, you choose the cosine solution. Okay. Well, what you do is, is make use of those initial conditions. So we're saying when time equals zero, your initial x value is small a, some number. And so that would be equal to your amplitude times the cosine of omega. You, that's where you plug in your zero for time. And then you have a phase angle. Okay, so in other words, little a would be amplitude times cosine of that phase angle. Okay, now at the same time, uh, we, we know the initial speed. So your um, speed is the derivative of position with respect to time. So if you're using cosine, um, we could have negative a times omega times sine of omega t plus the phase angle. Okay, so we could go ahead and say at time equals zero, your initial speed is little b. And that would be equal to um, negative amplitude times angular frequency times sine of the phase angle. So now we would have two equations for two unknowns. An alternative of doing this is uh, we, we can find the amplitude a different way. We could say something like um, energy is conserved as the spring is bouncing back and forth. So your total energy, one way of writing that, is one half your spin constant times amplitude squared. Okay, so when, when you're fully extended at one of the endpoints, all of your energy is potential. Now at your, using your initial conditions, you'd have one half k little a squared, and okay, that's your potential energy at that point. And then you'd have some initial kinetic energy, one half m little b squared, if that's your speed. So we, we could use this and solve for the amplitude. You could take your amplitude, you could plug it into either one of your y these boxed equations and solve for the, the phase angle. Um, or <laughs> what you could do is uh, these two boxed equations here. Uh, let, let's say you you could divide those equations by each other. So, f for example, maybe maybe you could take your speed equation. Okay, something like that, and divide it. <laughs> uh, by your position equation. Okay. And what you'd have is this ratio here. Notice how the, the amplitudes would actually cancel out. So you'd have negative omega times sine of your phase angle divided by cosine, which would be tangent. Okay. There's, there's all these little things that you could do um, in, in order to solve for your your phase angle and amplitude. In this case, your, your phase angle would be the, uh, the inverse tangent of B over omega A, <laughs> something like that. Okay, so, um, yeah, that, that, that's all algebra. That's playing with the system of equations. Most importantly is how to set these things up. You could use your a cosine, you could use a sine, it doesn't matter. Um, you plug in time equals zero along with these initial values that are given in the problem for position and or speed 
and then you it becomes math, it becomes algebra. Um, but those that's how you kind of set up these types of systems. And in the end, you know, they'll, they'll always give you enough information to solve the thing. So I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.